Hello and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, welcome back to the car, welcome back to Cornwall, welcome back to autumn. It is autumn, it is October, and there is something, there is something in the air. Because I'm on a journey today, I'm on a journey and I'm going to Bristol. You guys are not going all the way to Bristol though. That would mean something like a four hour vlog, and while I could do that if I had the cables for the cameras to keep them charged, nobody wants to see that. So you guys are going as far as... Uh, Carlin Cross, which is where I bought the Toyota. We're going back to the Toyota's home, uh, at least for the first leg of the journey. Uh, don't worry, I'm not doing anything with the car, I just need to update the service plan, but it's a good point to stop the vlog. Um, but yeah, no, I was gonna clean the car before, before setting out, and could not. You see, the road is wet, incredibly wet, super wet, if, uh, if one had to put a word to it, because even though it is bright and sunny now, every now and again, just a torrential rainstorm rolls through and the air turns silver. And I'm just like, mate, I've done what I can, but I just can't keep this car clean. And the road is just, the road dirt is just getting thrown up by just about everything. So I'm just like, well, I'll clean it when I get back. And just have to admit defeat on that one. But that's not what I wanted to talk about today. What I wanted to talk about was something I've been thinking about the last week or so, and that's the old internet. The old internet? What do you mean the old internet? The internet is the same as it always has been, old bean. Has it? Has it really? Have things not changed in the years since the internet really uh, first came about? Because I remember the early days of the internet, and there are some people being born these days, like my nephew. My nephew is being born into the world of iPads and smartwatches and things that just are connected. Fridges, which automatically order more milk when you run out. Or you can little, do a little tap on it and you can see what's inside because there are cameras and stuff. He's growing up in a world with virtual reality. He's growing up in a world that basically we thought might be the future back when we were reading cyberpunk novels. And that's, uh, that's kind of an interesting thing. However, however, the internet hasn't always been this always on behemoth that it is now. Back in the early days, you would have a 56K modem. I know there were earlier modems. There was like the 28.8 BPS modem, but that's not what I started with. Mum, when we were kids, was not very keen on getting a, uh, getting the internet. So what ended up happening is that uh, we didn't get it until I was in college. So we got a 56k modem. Dad and I were in uh, PC World and it was just like, you know what, let's get us, let's just get the internet, let's just get it and mum will just, you know, just have it then. So we did, uh, we got a CD that g uh, gave us access to the internet um, and that's how we connected. Now the interesting thing is, the super interesting thing is, the internet only came down the pipe at about 4 kilobits per second. A 56k modem doesn't download stuff at 56k. What it does is download at about 4 kilobits, if you're lucky. Maybe 3.5. That's kilobits, not megabits. And every two hours, the, uh, the internet just kind of cuts off. So two hours, your, so your phone um, provider just goes, ah, oh, you've had a two hour phone call, the internet's turned off. Oh, all right, that's an interesting thing. Also, if you were on the internet, nobody could use the phone. If they picked up the phone, they would hear just a lot of squeaking and squawking because your, your 56K modem is a modulator demodulator and that would take digital signals and it would convert them into analog signals. And those analog signals were just like noise and tone. So what ended up happening is your phone was busy for the whole time you're on the internet. So back then I was only really on the internet in the evenings and at night when everyone had gone to bed. And I was talking to my friends, not on Discord because Discord wasn't a thing. Um, and not, not over Twitch because Twitch wasn't a thing and you couldn't watch videos because YouTube wasn't a thing. You would use MSN Messenger or ICQ, um, usually with like a trillion app. 
and yeah, you would you would uh, you would type to people. It was one up from text messaging on a T9 keyboard. So you'd be typing away, typing away, and then oh oh, internet's disconnected. So you'd you'd reconnect. You'd and it would go through the dial tones, and it would do the squeaking and squawking, and then you'd be back on the internet. Unless everyone had in fact gone to bed, and you were like me, you had a, 50, a US Robotics 56K modem in your bedroom. Because at that point, we already had one modem in the house, why would we not have two? So I bought one for my, my uh, computers in my bedroom. And uh, that had a massive speaker built in, and every time it disconnected, the speaker went back to full volume. Oh yes, everyone in the house heard when I was reconnecting to the internet and I would just get someone at the bedroom door it's like, do you know what time of night it is? And I'm like, yeah, I do actually. Hmm. <laughs> so the internet was different. Uh, I do remember buying the orange box. So gaming was different as well. What you would normally do is you would buy a CD, a, uh, a polycarbonate wafer which was silvered on one side and you would pop that into your computer and that had 700 megabytes of data on it and that was where your game was stored. And you'd have something called a CD key which was a long, uh, a long alphanumeric number. And what you would do is you would put that long alphanumeric number in when the game said, hey, give me the CD key. Now I didn't really check uh, on the internet because you would have to be connected for that, but it just looked through a list and went, yeah, sure, that's okay. And that was copy protection for your, uh, for your video game. It's kind of made piracy a little easy back in the old days. Um, but I remember buying the orange box, which had Half-Life 2 and Portal in it. And the interesting thing is that Half-Life 2... So I bought the orange box from Woolworths in Truro. Woolworths doesn't exist anymore. Uh, I got it as a physical copy, put it on the machine, installed it. I was super excited to play Half-Life 2. And it went, oh, by the way, you need to install Steam. Steam? I don't want to install Steam. I barely have the internet. It's a 56k modem, old chum. What am I going to do with Steam? So it insisted I install Steam, and then it had like a day one patch of 20 megabytes. A day one 20 megabyte patch. Now these days, that would be done in seconds. Literally seconds. Back then, on a 56k modem, on dial-up, it took one hour to download the patch. An entire hour to download an entire patch. And I was just like, mate, what are you doing? I hated Steam so much that basically, as soon as it had uh, finished, I disabled it. And it stayed disabled for years. Now, Steam isn't like it is now. It's not uh, the game library system that it is these days. It was a kind of weird greeny yellow color. Kind of the same color they put on cigarette packets to dissuade people from buying them, to make them look terrible. And so we had this thing and it, it was kind of the butt of many jokes. Uh, it wasn't very good and everyone hated it. And I didn't, I didn't reinvestigate Steam until about 2006. It stayed disabled for kind of that long. I was just like, no, no, you can go now. 2006, something happened. It was my first MMO. I went around my friend's house because they did have broadband. I took my computer with me. It wasn't quite a LAN party, although we did LAN up. And uh, I signed up to EVE Online back in 2006. So my EVE Online character is, is 2006 Vintage. And that's kind of cool. So. 2006 vintage EVE Online character, and my first few weeks of playing that game were on a 56k modem. So I was playing this game on a 56k modem, and it worked surprisingly well, so long as you remembered about the two-hour disconnect. So you, you got into a station or you got your ship safe. Um, I did not get broadband until... What is going on here? I'm going to go I'm gonna scooty booty around them because I genuinely don't know what's going on. This is, this is very strange. I think we're supposed to be doing like 50, but we'll see, Q's likely, all right. No, we're okay. It was just everyone slowing down for that junction. Weird, now we're supposed to be doing 50. Okay, tap her down, set autopilot on, let this guy cruise out, 
and then tuck in behind him. So the car is set to 50, whatever. Um, that's fine. You do want to be following the speed limit in a British, uh, in British roadworks because there are speed, average speed cameras. They don't look like, they just look like a normal camera, but they will track you through the roadworks. So the guy in the outside lane is going to get pinged if he's not careful. So we are locked at 50. Good. Oh, traffic. Wonderful. I did wonder if we were going to get run into traffic today. Hmm. I did bring new batteries for the cameras. Can't do anything with them. So we'll see what goes on here. Kind of wondering about scooting into the outside lane because I think we should be okay in the outside lane on this one. Hmm. Interesting. The perils of driving in Cornwall, no matter what time of year you are here, you're likely to get stuck in traffic. It's just one of those things. And it is a Friday and it is 11 o'clock, so there is a lot of it on the road. So yeah, uh, EVE Online. Uh, we got broadband, played it for a bit, and then, well, I moved out. I moved out of my parents' place into the place that I am currently. And I was like, oh, I can get whatever internet I want. So I paid for, I, I paid for 20 megabyte or megabit broadband. And I was getting about one or less than one because I live out in the countryside. I don't live in the city, I'm not city folk. So I was living out in the countryside and I was getting less than one megabit. And it was with British Telecom. And there's an interesting thing because you get a router with them. You get a British Telecom router and the British Telecom router has something of a problem. If it detects too much noise on the line, if it detects that there's no throughput, it'll just disconnect and then reconnect. And where I am, out in the sticks, it takes about six minutes for it to reconnect. So the router just goes, ah, oh, too much noise on the line. I tell you what, I'm gonna reconnect, see if I can get a better signal. There's no way to control that. It just does it. And I've checked, there's no fault with the line. Uh, there's no fault with the with the box itself. I've had different routers and they all do the same thing And it's just a case of oh, all right, so you're playing EVE Online a game notoriously Challenging because if your stuff gets blown up you're playing spaceships in space If somebody comes along and PVPs you while you're in space and your ship gets blown up You lose your ship you lose everything on it and in it. It's gone. It's it, it doesn't come back um, and in those days we had Mumble. So Mumble came in and that was our primary way of talking to one another as friends. And that was a huge step up from ICQ and it was a huge step up from MSN Messenger. And you just got to, you just got to talk. And there was obviously, there were people who would just have open mic. The mic was just on their desk. They would open mic and you'd hear them eating peanuts, Alan. Peanuts with a T, Alan. Um, but yeah, you, so you would do that, um, but Mumble has this like voice overlay and it tells you when people come in to, into chat. It also tells you recording states if someone's recording and it tells you if you've been disconnected and whether it's re trying to re uh, retry the connection. And the song of my people, after I moved into the place that I'm in, for the first year or so was disconnected. So I'd be flying along in EVE Online in my Pirate Faction Macarial, my Pirate Faction battleship with billions of in-game currency. And then you'd just be disconnected. And I'm just like, oh, I hope all those red flashy people will leave my ship alone. Um, so yeah, moving to broadband didn't fix the you get disconnected every few hours problem. It's not until recently when it's become a little more stable. It still happens. It happened Thursday night. I was just like, ah, oh, I'm going to upload a video. Uh-huh. Oh, it's disconnected. How is it disconnected? Well, fortunately, YouTube nowadays does allow you to uh, continue an upload. So if it gets interrupted, you can now continue an upload. In the old days of YouTube, you couldn't do that. If, uh, if an upload got interrupted, you had to start all over again. And if it's a two hour upload, if it's like a 10 gig upload where I am, that's an overnight job. That's like five to seven hours. So that's a, that's a fun old time. Um, that's why some days you, you just didn't get a video back then. Although back then we weren't really uploading videos all that regularly. 
So the YouTube channel started in 2013. 2007, I believe all the mature channels, uh, like Game Grumps and all that, were the ones that sort of kicked off. So if you wanted to be in the popular channel group, you needed to be out in about 2007, I think. So uh, yeah, we missed that by a few years. Uh, I can't actually remember YouTube when YouTube came online, but I do remember the early days of YouTube. Uh, very small videos, like 240p, and that was important. That was important. That was, I mean, that was amazing for the time. It was very primitive, very basic. The the player was a lot more simple than it is now, and 240p doesn't sound like a lot, but then VHS is like 240i, so it's two, 240 pixels interlaced, so you get every other frame drawn as a line, a series of lines in the other frame. So yeah, it, it was a huge step up. It, on modern monitors, it would look like uh, it would be the size of a shredded wheat. But I do remember, I do remember uh, building websites in the early days of the internet. And there were some eccentricities. I was volunteering before I got my job uh, as a computer technician um, at a place in Truro. And one of the website designers was showing me this thing called Flash. A Flash video, holy crap. And he was like, yeah, 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 we can take this video and we can squash it down. And it was a video of um, like a boat race and they'd squashed it down to fit uh, a few hundred kilobytes. And they were like, you can still watch it, it's perfect. Well, no, it, it looked like they just put Vaseline all over the video. It, it was terrible. Flash, we now know these days, was a colossal pain in the butt. But back then, um, it was pretty good. And I do remember using Flash to make uh, elements for, uh, for websites, things like navigation, because you could do things when the mouse hovered over. So I, m I would make like post-it notes and I would put like handwritten text on them and they would change when you hovered over, but you could also move the post-it notes around the screen. Um, so th that was kind of cool. But the thing about early websites is you needed to fit them within like 80 kilobytes video, uh, that, was, that was the images, video, anything that you had on there had to fit within about 80 kilobytes. And 80 kilobytes was super important because everyone was still on dial-up way into like the, the 2000s. Um, I think even into the like the 2010s, most people were still on dial-up. So you had a big problem there. Uh, fit the whole website within 80 kilobytes. These days that doesn't happen. These days you, you pull up a news website on your phone and it starts playing like a video of something in the background and uh, you, you have no idea really what's going on. Oh, and by the way, you scroll up and the video minimizes and it stays at the top of the screen but you can't do anything with it. There's no audio coming out. And I'm like, why? What is this about? Are you just plus wanting the view count on this thing? It's very strange um, how much uh, systems kind of disregard um, like bandwidth these days. They're like, oh, everyone's on broadband. So even the smallest website, whatever, will just bung a load of adverts on it and that'll be fine. Ooh, are we stopping again? I think there's also traffic lights up here. So what they're doing is they're dueling um, the, the A30 from Chivering Cross to Carlin Cross and it's works that's uh, supposed to be done by Christmas. But we know a lot of things that are supposed to be done by Christmas are never really done by Christmas. So yeah, it's kind of an interesting one. Um, so yeah, websites needed to be fit within 80 kilobytes. I do remember making some websites way back in the early days and uh, I used Front Page Express initially because a friend of mine was just like, hey, we've got some web space, why don't you make yourself a website? And I was like, oh, all right, how do I do that? And he's like, oh, get Front Page Express and uh, just, you know, just have a play with it. So having a play with it was look at other people's websites and see how they were made. Turns out you make a table. A table? Yeah, like a table, like, um, like you have in Word, say, or like uh, Excel. You make a table. It's a square thing with a load of boxes in it. And then what you do is you put your images in it and you put your menu in it. So the menu would be either down the side or across the top. 
and uh, every every like element was kind of fixed in place within this table. It was a way of getting websites uh, back in the early days, but all websites kind of felt the same. And we now know that it was also a terrible way of making websites. These days you use PHP and CSS, cascading style sheets, and the PH, uh, PHP is the hypertext preprocessor. So uh, these days you have much more control over your, your site and you can do things, you can make it dynamic and stuff. But yeah, the, the first website that I made, or the first few websites, were actually made in Front Page Express as a table. Ooh, yeah. Considering nowadays I just use Notepad to make websites, we've come a long, long way. So yeah, the early days of the internet. Oh yeah. And because we weren't, well, because a lot of us weren't using Steam, if you wanted to update your games, that was a thing that was kind of a rare thing. So uh, quite often you got a game on a CD and it would just work. That was just something that happened. So the game on the CD, it would just work. It would work. You would, uh, you would pop it in, you would do the CD key, and then you would start playing it. So Wing Commander 3, Teeth of the Tiger, came on like eight CDs because it had a lot of video in it. Um, Baldur's Gate came on, I think, two or three CDs, the original Baldur's Gate. Um, but thinking about patching a game, yeah, you didn't really, didn't really think about that. It wasn't a thing. But you did have places like GameSpy. What's GameSpy? Well, GameSpy isn't, doesn't exist anymore. Um, it was sort of a game journalism website, but it also had game demos, so you could download demos. And you could also download patches as well. So you would have, um, you'd have a bunch of patches that you could download for games. And they weren't very big. They were sort of like six megs or 12 megs or something like that. Maybe you got a 30 meg patch and it was a pain in the butt, especially if you're still on dial up, which I was for the longest time. And um, then what you would do, uh, yeah, you would just go there and, and download them, them patches. There were, I think there were videos on the site, I can't remember, but there was a lot of journalism. And I remember there was uh, one, of the, one of the journalistic things, they had like a back and forth. It was a very simplistic like back and forth. It was almost like improv, but in text. And the only thing I remember about it was, Ich kranken spanken dein Mutti. And the other guy going, what? That's all I remember from, from the journalism on, on the GameSpy website. But GameSpy's gone now, it, it disappeared. I think the need for having a place with patches went when Steam um, and then Origin and EA Play and all that sort of, uh, EA Play, is that Origin? I don't know. All of that stuff sort of took off and um, you just get patched automatically now. And patches these days, it's like, oh yeah, there's a 60 gigabyte patch. What? Remembering that the first forced patch that I had, the first day one patch that Steam put on me was 20 megabytes and it took an hour. These days, uh, yeah, a 60 gig patch just is normal. I'm like, oh. So this is fun. I'm gonna follow the silver car, I think. Uh, 8.30 East, which I think is the middle one. Yeah, because we don't need the A390. Uh, I think this is still a 30 zone. So, we're gonna indicate. And we're gonna peel out. Hopefully things speed up from now. That would be nice. That would be nice. Yeah, I did. so one of the early jobs that I had was in an internet cafe. Uh, I worked in an internet cafe in St. Ives. I actually got the job by volunteering. So I was with the Venture Scouts, and what I did, because uh, one of my friends was like, oh, I want to set up a LAN party for the Venture Scouts. Uh, and there was this place in St. Ives that I'd seen but I hadn't been in. And he was like, oh, I don't live there, but can you go and like knock on the door and... Uh, see if that would be cool. And I went, yeah, sure. So I went down there and I said, hi, look, um, we want to set up like a Venture Scout thing. Uh, I want to bring a load of people in at this time in the evening. Is that okay? And he was like, yeah, sure. And I was like, it seems quite quiet in here. Do you, do you get that much in the way of like um, people coming in? And he was like, well, well, I mean, it was all right, but 
I think it was, um, was it early in the, it was late in the year, so it wasn't quite tourist season. Um, and I said, look, I'm not doing much at the moment because I just left the job um, in a hotel. I was a silver service waiter in a hotel. And I'm like, dude, I'm not doing much. Do you need someone to come in and volunteer? And he was like, no, I'll pay you. If you come in um, and work here, I'll, I'll pay you. And I was like, oh, that was like the easiest, just, not the easiest job, but yeah, I just walked in, uh, walked into a job in an internet cafe. That was kind of fun. So um, did that for a bit. Uh, an interesting, interesting thing is a lot of people will come in and ask for SCART cables. They're like, do you sell SCART cables? No. But uh, yeah, so the internet cafe had a blisteringly fast connection. Considering home was still 56K, dial-up modem, the internet cafe had a business line. It was ISDN, 128 kilobits per second. Oh yes, you could play a video game online with 128 kbps. In fact, you could play Unreal Tournament, UT99, which I did. Uh, that was the favored game in the internet cafe. And we played that an awful lot. Uh, we had little tournaments set up and what we would do is we would uh, rush to grab the Dima. So there was, um, like people would come in, like regulars would come in and we would play a little tournament like every lunchtime. I'd also have to make coffee and things, uh, but not tea because we didn't have a kettle that got hot enough and the coffee machine should not be used for making tea because it just makes grass water, like water that tastes like it's been made of grass clippings. So yeah, the tea was never good in the internet cafe, but the coffee was pretty good. I got quite good at making cappuccino. Um, but yeah, 128K BPS, oof. 128 kilobits per second. That was rough, that was very rough. So we, uh, we did that. There was effectively uh, broadband in the area, but that was only being used for the security cameras in the town at the time. So the town itself didn't even have broadband. That was, that was a frustrating thing. Uh, and there were the whispered of high-speed connections like the T1 line and the T3 line, which we just didn't have, we didn't have access to. So uh, yeah, but with the Internet Cafe, we had, some, we had quite a few machines, just regular machines that were uh, connected to the net. And those machines so those machines, oh my God, people come in and use them to access their emails because people weren't using mobile phones to access the net. Um, and that was kind of an inter interesting thing. So you didn't access the internet with your mobile phone. There was WAP. Now WAP, WAP, you wanna say that again, buddy? Yeah, I do. WAP doesn't mean now what it meant then. WAP then, was wireless application protocol. Wireless application protocol was what you used to access uh, a version of the internet. It was like XML data, uh, no pictures, just text, and it had to be specially created for mobile phones. And you had handsets which, it was, oh my God, yeah. It was like the Nokias, the old Nokias that you played Snake on with a T9 keyboard. And it was just a dot matrix screen. So you had this dot matrix screen and there wasn't any color. There wasn't even any, some of the brakes are squeaking in, it's not ours. Uh, so yeah, dot matrix screen, no color. You didn't have, you had like ringtones, but they were kind of built into the phone. Polyphonic ringtones were kind of big at the time. So you could send off a text to a number in a magazine and they would send you a polyphonic ringtone but then it would keep sending you them every month and then drain all your, your credit on the phone. It was, a, it was a different time. It was a wild west. And every time a truck goes past, the windscreen gets covered in crap. Yeah, so um, new road layout ahead, ignore sat nav. Mate, I'm not using it. I do need to know where Carlin Cross is. I genuinely don't know where Carlin Cross is and that's where I need to be. I don't think we've gone far enough to get there yet, so we'll we'll find out soon. I'm having to Zen navigate at this point. Um, 
Yeah, so uh, mobile phones. So nobody had a mobile phone. Well, people had them, but they didn't have access to the internet and WAP wasn't very good. So people would come in and they would, uh, they would be looking for their uh, emails that would be coming in from all over the world and they would just be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm from uh, New Zealand, or I'm from the Netherlands, I just need access to the, my emails. And it's like, yeah, it's like 250 an hour. It's actually real cheap considering um, the footfall that we actually got in the place. Um, and they get a coffee and they, they'd sit on a machine for a bit. So that was, that was a thing. And then, um, oh my God, yeah, there was, there was a guy that came in. So, okay, what would happen is you get more than one person and the internet would tank because it was on, uh, because it was on 128K. So if someone was in, you could not um, play video games. That was it, that was no video games if you were on, uh, if someone else was in the internet cafe. If, holy crap, what is going on? I wasn't prepared for this. There's a man pointing over there. It's like the, like the flags over Iwo Jima. Kind of cool. Um, so yeah, someone was in the internet cafe, the internet would tank. You could still access your emails, but you couldn't game. Um, but I do remember some American tourists coming in and this is, this is the time that it was. Some American tourists came in and they were like, uh, someone's just flown into the Twin Towers. And I was like, what? That was a weird one. So uh, yeah, that was a bit of a problem. And we were all just like, is it serious? Is it something, you know, because airplanes fly into buildings all the time. Is it a Cessna? Is it just like a light aircraft? So I found it on the internet. It's just like, holy crap, that was crazy. And I remember leaving, leaving work and it was just like, yeah, just madness has just gone on. It was yeah, just a, a strange feeling leaving work that day. Um, are you, where are you going? Double fisting your steering wheel. I think there's traffic control systems along here. So there's like, uh, cam uh, not gonna no, just cameras, but also lights. This journey normally takes about three and a half hours. I feel that it may take a lot longer than that. Hmm, all right. Well, music then. <sighs> We're still talking about the early days of the internet. Music was a thing. Um, it wasn't really a thing. Nobody really knew how to rip MP3s or anything. And then Napster came around and suddenly everyone was torrenting. They didn't know what torrenting was, but everyone was torrenting music from each other. And it was like, oh, you can just get free music and you don't have to listen to the music on the radio, which is fine because music on the radio was kind of boring, really. Uh, you, the radio stations play the same 20 tracks and they, they play the same five on repeat. So if you wanted to listen to the same thing, if you wanted to listen to status quo all day, you, you listen to the radio, which was kind of super boring. So having access to all of this music was suddenly really cool. Of course, it would take a while to download a seven megabyte uh, MP3, but you suddenly had access to all of this stuff that you only could dream of. And sure, yeah, you could buy a cassette tape or a CD or whatever. But back then, um, yeah, there wasn't any, so there wasn't any uh, like online music stores. And it wasn't until you had uh, like Apple Music uh, that came out and then you had Zune and then Amazon uh, had Amazon Music. And that suddenly gave access to a bunch of, of music. But when Napster was out, the, the bands, the bands that were putting out music were suddenly just like, people are just taking our music for free. What the hell is this? This is terrible. And they got really up, like super upset about it and uh, started suing people and people like taking mothers to court and mothers were going to court. This is like, yeah, mother of four in court and she needs to pay $30,000. And she's like, I'm not doing that. All right, we'll double it to 60,000. There were, there were news articles at the time trying to persuade people to stop sharing music. And it was like, yeah, no, this is absolutely crazy. It was, it was a wild west, but it was also a crazy time. 
Um, these days, if you want music, if you want to listen to something, you just go on to Spotify or you can go on to YouTube and just play the music. You might need to listen to an ad, but fine. Um, or if you want to buy it, just buy it from Amazon because it comes DRM free. I think Apple Music still has digital rights management built into it. DRM was a thing, was a huge thing uh, back in the early days of the internet. I remember Sony releasing a CD, a music CD, that put a rootkit on your computer. They effectively put a virus on your computer to monitor what you were doing, to make sure that you weren't copying their music. Oh yes. Yeah, they weren't, I mean, highly illegal now, but I don't even think they got a slap on the wrist. Um, oh, malware and spyware and all that sort of stuff. That didn't happen, that didn't start happening until about 1999 when the first bits of spyware came out. And those were like in adverts and things and they would just like track what you were doing and where you were going on the internet. Ooh yeah. These days um, you have uh, like Windows Defender built into Windows. Back then you would have to download a, ooh you'd have to download an antivirus and then your computer ran like ass because the antivirus would use all of the system resources. It was absolutely appalling. At least Windows Defender actually does its job and lets the computer run fairly fast. Um, but yeah, spyware and malware. Oh my God, you'd have to run things like uh, malware bytes. You probably still have to do it. Um, I just keep an eye on processes and just see what's going on in the background. Being a technician, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just gonna see what the computer's doing. Um, but yeah, back then it was a real problem. People would come to you and just be like, my computer's so super, super slow. And you'd be like, all right. So you bring it in, um, bring it into the office and then you'd have a look at it. And it's just like, oh, well, first of all, uh, it's full of spyware. So all of that is slowing your machine down. It's got about two dozen viruses. And then at the bottom where the system tray is, they'd have like bear share and lime wire. And they just have a bunch of stuff that started up when their computer started up. And it's just like, yeah, your computer's slow because it's trying to run all of this stuff on a single core processor uh, with like 512 megabytes of RAM or even 256 megabytes of RAM. And it's just like, you can't have all of this stuff running. So you clean it up, you get rid of bare share and LimeWire and all of the other things they're sharing music and stuff with. And then they go and reinstall it all. And it's just like, why did you do this? Why did you do, uh, why did you do that, mate? And they're like, my computer's slow again. Yeah, I know, it's slow. I had a friend who did that several times and I'm just like, why, why? But yeah, so I don't see it these days because all my friends are gamers and they want to keep their computer running as fast and as smooth as possible. So um, like keeping on top of viruses and spyware and stuff is kind of de rigueur these days. Wowzers. We're not even, we're not even as far as the old Nissan garage. This, this journey from where we start, where the traffic stops to here normally takes like five minutes, maybe on a bad day. Yeah, this is crazy. I hope the rest of the journey isn't like this because I'm getting, because I am going to Bristol. And by going to Bristol, I need to get there before rush hour. Because if you think this traffic is bad, holy crap, rush hour in Bristol is a pain in my bum. It's city folk. It's a city. It's up in the city, so there's a lot of city folk doing city folk stuff. I guess it's probably moving a little bit easier than it is down here. Mine got. I don't know if there's anything else back from the early days of the internet. Um, I do remember one website that I would go to fairly regularly that was, um, it wasn't YouTube, it was in the days before YouTube and it had just a load of music videos on it. And that was when I was working in the internet cafe. And you could set a, set a music video to cache. So you hit play and then you hit stop and then you wait for the bar along the bottom of the screen to fill up. And then when it had all filled up, you hit play again and then you, you could play the music video smoothly. Um, and so I just watched like Smashing Pumpkins. I think it was Smashing Pumpkins, was it Disarm? 
um, and things like I just bought yeah music videos. It's like it's just amazing to see stuff on the internet. Um, I did kind of dream that one day you'd be able to watch television on the watching television on the internet. Oh my god, that was unheard of, unthought of. It's like can you watch TV programs? Is there a place where you can watch TV programs? I was like, I don't know. That would be amazing though. And these days you have YouTube and Amazon Prime and Netflix and yeah. Like the internet has come a long way from just a, just a website that fit within 80 kilobytes, uh, 80 kilobytes and that had to fit in a table. Woo, all right, I'll tell you what. Uh, we've talked for a long time about stuff, but this traffic is not easing up. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna leave it there for the time being. Uh, if you like this video, definitely leave a little like, leave a subscribe. And if you do subscribe, click the little bell if you want notifications. If you don't want notifications, um, come on, don't click the bell. I suppose I should have said dingle the bingle. Dingle the bingle if you want notifications. If you don't, don't click the bell and I'll tell you what, I'll catch you next time. <laughs>